Girls with Goals, brought to you by Neutrogena Hydro Boost Cleansers, using hydrating agents and hyaluronic acid to boost and lock in hydration. Hello and welcome to Girls With Goals. I'm Neve Marr. This week's episode is brought to you by Neutrogena. We're bringing you a fantastic opportunity with thanks to Neutrogena. We want to help you reach your goals, whatever they may be, by entering and telling us more about it. You could be in with a chance of winning 5,000 euro. To do so, head over to her and you can get all the information. We're also running a live event in Dublin on August 21st with the lovely Nicola Hughes. So keep an eye out on our social channels about more information with that too. Now down to business. It's time to introduce our guest this week. Aoife McNamara is a fashion designer from Limerick. Sustainability is close to her heart and she's also making a massive impact on the fashion world, which is notoriously hard to do so. So Aoife, thank you so much for coming in. Thank you for having me. That Delighted. was a nice introduction. Was it? Thank you. First time. <laughs> Nobody needs to know. Um, it's lovely to have you. So I can't wait to talk about your career and, and everything that you've been doing over the last couple of years. Safe to say you've kind of blown up in a very short period of time. So I want to learn all about that. But first, we're going to start the way we always start. So it's with our game. It's called Six Words or Less. And it's for any of our readers or our viewers and listeners who don't know who you are. So you have to describe yourself in six words or less. So in your own time. Okay. So I'm definitely very optimistic, mm -hmm. um, easygoing, motivated, um, determined, positive. Um, what am I on? Like four and a half? <laughs> four, four and a half? Um, four and a hyphen? I think they're the main ones. That's it. That's good. Six words or less. Yeah, I love them. Very positive. Yeah, I, I would see myself as like trying to be a very positive and sort of motivated person. Yeah, it says it on your t-shirt as well, so yeah. it absolutely has to be true. Um, so let's go back a little bit first, um, and I kind of want to know about when fashion became something incredibly important to you. So was it always from an early age that you had an inkling that this was going to be your career? Mm -hmm. So I think it started, like, throughout school I was always very good at art. Mm -hmm. And then, you know, going to like your career guidance counsellors, starting with them and like looking at the options. Um, I knew I loved fashion and then seeing the course, LSAD is the course that I did in yeah. Limerick and seeing the course like right beside me. Um, I remember I went to see their fashion show one year and I was just like blown away. Like I was mesmerised by how people could actually just create clothes and like have them on a human being. I was like, what, people can make these clothes? I think it sort of started with like, my love for art and then seeing the options out there and then going to see what the college did in LSAD, which is amazing. Yeah. And then being like, oh my God, okay, this is it. And then since like, that was, I did that in fourth year in school, I went to see their fashion show and then I was just like, okay, this is all I want to do. Transfixed, <laughs> yeah, yeah. yeah. Had you ever tried to make any garments or clothes and stuff before you went to college? Because I remember when, when I was younger, we used to get, me and my friends, do you remember those? They looked kind of like sewing machines, but they were those stud machines and you could like bedazzle your clothes with them. It was kind of an oh early God, 2000s thing. Oh my God, I do. No, thing. I do remember that. My sister had young. them. Yeah, so. And you used to get loads of different things to put onto them. Yeah, it was horrific. Onto your, like, your jeans awful, and stuff. Awful, yeah. awful, awful I actually stuff. had them, yeah. yeah. But um, so you'd get like um, denim jackets that were already probably completely adorned yeah, because it I was the bewitched that. era and then yeah. you'd just like, Oh, mad they like were that. the funnest, yeah. Yeah, I so them. I thought I yeah. was a fashion designer when really I was just up in my room, like absolutely hammering jewels into a denim oh jacket. My God. <laughs> and then just styling around the playground. But like, had you ever attempted to make anything before you knew what to make? Basically, I'm saying I didn't have a clue. Yeah, no. But I still attempted things. Yeah, to be honest, like, I know a lot of like fashion designers are like, oh, I've done this since I was like five, I've always been sewing. But I haven't, like, I did mm. Halloween costumes and all that. I had a sewing machine since I was in fourth year after seeing that I bought a sewing machine after that and I tried out my own thing but I never learned how to sew I never knew how to sew I just sort of like watched some YouTube videos and like sort of just like did it myself I didn't do any courses or anything before I went to college yeah um so yeah I always like had like an inkling I was always very creative with my mm -hmm. hands um but I never knew how to sew or anything previously to yeah. college oh wow okay yeah and so when you went into the Limerick School of Art and Design. I want to hear about that course and stuff like that. But before you went in there, would you have described yourself as having a certain style, like away from kind of 
the designing of fashion and the designing of clothes like did you have a certain style growing up in Limerick was it like very different to other styles around the country or would you even say it is like my own personal yeah. style yeah I think I I always love like vintage clothing I always mm -hmm. loved like going to thrift stores and picking out different things that no one else had right. I wasn't one to like shop on the trend yeah um I suppose I'd always have like really bright colors um, like my brother, like he'd always slag me in my clothes. He'd be like, <laughs> like, because they'd be so colourful. I'd always like love colour and love like sh trying to shop outside the trend. So I sort of did have my own personal style around vintage clothing. Yeah. And like just finding those bits that no one else could have. Right. I think that's what I loved. That's what I still do love in fashion. Yeah. Um, kind today. of in, in terms of like the sustainability aspect as well, yeah, which we will get on yeah. to and talk about. So the Limerick School of Art and Design, that was kind of. Uh, the first experience of like proper making garments. Yeah, yeah. So what was that experience like for you? What was it like going in there on day one? Were you nervous? Were you excited? Yeah, it was scary because they don't they don't choose everyone for the fashion course. It's right. hard to get into, mm -hmm. and some of my friends didn't get in. Um, so you really have to like for you have your first year, you try out all your different things, then you choose what you want to do. Mm. Um, so I, I didn't want to do anything other than fashion, but yeah, it's scary because. You're like, oh, all these, some people do do courses beforehand. Um, and, you know, starting from scratch, like anything, it's hard. But there's a lot of people in the same boat. Mm. Um, but I feel like the teachers are so good there. You know, everyone is so helpful. Yeah. Um, so if you do have, like, questions and, like, everything, like, about jobs in the line or anything before you start, yeah. there is all of that there as well. So, and, and what did you have to do in order to get into the fashion course? Was it kind of portfolio based? Yeah. Oh my God. I I started my portfolio in fourth year after I found out I wanted to do this. I literally wow. was like, okay, so you're I'm just on doing it for like it. a couple of years. Yeah, because I did it every Saturday. Well, not every Saturday. Now I was like hit and miss. Mm. Um, mainly. Oh, no, sorry, fifth year. So it was like the end of fourth year. It was so fifth and sixth year. Yeah. I tried to, obviously sixth year was so busy, so I tried to finish it up before mm -hmm. all that. So it was like half fourth year, then mainly fifth year. But I definitely start your portfolio, like not your final year because you're so stressed with your leaving cert. Yeah. So started, I did it with Breach Cameron in Julie Kilmartins in Limerick and it was brilliant. So you have your portfolio. It's actually huge. It's like an A... I don't even know. A3? Sorry. Yeah, A3. Is that the... Re no, A3 is bigger than A3. A2? A2, yeah. I don't know. I think it could be <laughs> <Nobody>. A2. <laughs> Leave but, the yeah. comments in the comment <laughs> box and let us know the correct... It's definitely not A4. I got that. Uh, no, no, not A4. <laughs> um, but yeah, you have a huge portfolio and you bring it in. I actually travelled all around Ireland with it, just in case I didn't get... Because you have to get accepted with your portfolio as well. Right. Before you even, like, get into the college. Yeah. They accept you. You have to get um, a certain amount of points in your leaving cert. And then you have to get um, a certain amount of points in your portfolio. So I sort of went around Ireland with that, but I always knew I wanted to go to Ella City. Yeah. Um, but yeah, you have your portfolio and then you have... Was there an interview? There's an interview in some of them. I don't mm. even... I think... I don't know if there was not. Oh my yeah. God, I can't remember. But it was like mostly sketches and stuff like yeah, that. Yeah, right. it's like all... They don't want you to do like loads of fashion stuff. They always say that like, don't... They, but put it in like obviously if that's what you're good at. But um. Mm. They want to see like a variety of stuff, so you're trying out all the different things. Because obviously, sketching and painting, I did loads of paintings and 3D work um, and like still drawings. There's, yeah, there's loads in it. And you also, you do, oh yeah, you write a, an essay as well. Yeah. Um, a, a short one just about like what you want to get in and all that. Nice. So yeah, you, you made it in. And yeah. so, like, incredible. And obviously, an incredibly competitive realm to go into in the first place. Um, when you started the course, is it a very competitive atmosphere? Because obviously everybody, in particular those who are doing the fashion course, have one goal in mind. And I'm presuming the majority of them, you know, want to work in fashion. I don't know whether everybody would want to have their own line or their own label. Um, but did you feel a kind of competitive energy or was it a was it a friendly atmosphere to be in? Yeah, do you know what? I think I was really lucky at my year because I've heard like in other colleges and in other years, it's mm. really like, you know, there can be a lot of like competitiveness and like not, it's not that nice an environment to be around. But our year, we're, we're all so close. So mm. I think we were really lucky in that way. But of course, like you're always going to be competitive. Like being, if you're getting into the fashion industry, you're probably a competitive person yeah. because it is, quite a hard industry to go into 
Um, so yeah, there, of course there's always that, but I was lucky there wasn't like, you never really felt it with our class, like we had such a good class. Yeah. Um, so I was lucky. So that's good. And yeah. then so after you graduated, what were the next steps for you? What was the... Yeah, so I suppose I moved straight to Paris after I graduated. Um, I lived there for five months after I graduated. And then um, I was working in the fashion industry over there. And then I got offered a job back home here while I was over there. Um, and then I took that job um, and then I came back home. But yeah, I suppose after, after you graduate, you just sort of want to move away and especially just yeah. experience the whole industry. Um, Is it about getting an internship? Is it about getting around the people who yeah. might be able to like spot and nurture your talent? Yeah, I think so. Like you, like... Throughout college, you all you know you have designers that you'd love to work with, and you sort of. I think the most important thing when you leave college is to, if you really admire a designer, like try work with them, even if it's for free, which a lot of the time it is, unfortunately, in fashion industry. Yeah. But I think that is important because you're learning so much there. You mm -hmm. can't like the knowledge you gain from that. You can't put a price on it. Yeah. Um. And I've learned so much when I was in New York as well, interning over there. Um. But yeah, you. I'd say intern straight off college, definitely go and intern. Uh, go abroad if you can. Um, most people do end up abroad anyway, mm. unfortunately, <laughs> but um, yeah. London, Paris, New York, the graduate visa is amazing. Yeah. So definitely go away. Is that what you did when you were in New York? I So in third year, I went over and I worked um, with Mark Jacobs for five months. So amazing. I was interning over there with him. Did you meet him? For, yeah, he'd be in the studio, but like obviously. What's he like? I mean, I didn't get to personally talk to him. <laughs> What's I just he look to, like but, from afar? Oh, have you never seen? No, I have uh, photos. Seen him, yeah, but in person. But, uh, oh yeah, no, he he was really like he's just really easy going. Like it's yeah. really interesting just to see the environment that mm. they have created. It's like a really good environment. See, um, I would to imagine it would be manic. It know. is. It has it to is, be manic. Of course, yeah, yeah. And everyone is crazy, but like that's just the fashion industry in general. Like, yeah. So I thought, like you know, gauging it from like other experience, it was a really nice environment. Um, but yeah, it's just my it's crazy to see like the top of the top just yeah. to see how they work and see how he works and I think I took a lot from that experience just like the, I was just mesmerized the whole time just I taking just, it all just in. like soaking it in like a sponge yeah like the yeah. whole experience was just yeah mind-blowing did you ever see that tiny little snippet in the hills when Lauren um Conrad went to New York and she was interning as well and she went and like interned in the Marc Jacobs studio. Oh, did she? Yeah, okay. and, and so she was alphabetizing, even though she was clearly a reality TV star and she was just there because Marc oh, Jacobs wanted yeah. to be on the hills. I would imagine, I don't know. But either way, like he waltzes in and he's smoking a cigarette, like indoors. Yeah, he always smokes his, um, he has his electric one now and he has his dogs running around, it's so funny. So he vapes now as yeah, opposed to, oh, yeah. well that's I a remember nice progression. The one time I literally, I, so I was running in for the lift and I pressed it. I didn't know he was in there before. And like, stop, this they is like a movie. Stop, no, I nearly died. So then the, I was like, oh my God, Joan, it's annoying when someone presses it and the door is just closed. So the door is open. I was like, oh, sorry. And I was like, <gasps> and he literally just like blew his cigarette. And my, Joe, like, he's just like, <sighs> and I was just like, <sighs> I literally felt like getting out of the lift and going up the stairs. <laughs> like they do in the Devil Wears Yeah, Prada. that was literally, and it was just me and him in the lift. I was just like, <sighs> did you say anything? No, I was just like, oh, sorry. <laughs> I mean, like his dog and his dog, and he was just like, I was like, oh my god. I wonder what he was thinking. He was probably going through like like a million things in your brain and then like, you were probably just person? thinking, I am in this list. Delaying with my Mark time, yeah. Jacobs. yeah. I know. It's so funny. Oh, yeah. that's a great story. I can't believe you didn't like I don't know, ask him something or I don't know. I, know. I probably wouldn't. I, probably I wanted wouldn't. to say a million things, but then you're also just like you know, you're trying to play cool. Not play cool, but cool, also yeah. like you don't want to annoy the person because you know they're obviously... They yeah, going actually, on. if anybody spoke to me in a lift, <laughs> I know I'm not Mark Jacobs. <laughs> if anybody spoke to me in a lift, I would be a bit like, hmm, yeah. what's happening? Um, so, so you went away, you left Ireland. What made you come back to Ireland? Oh, it was the job. Yeah, yeah, right. I think the job, I loved, I loved Paris. Mm. Um, I moved, I moved there by myself. I moved to New York by myself as well, but I didn't have, I met friends when I got there, but I didn't have French and I was working. I liked my job, but I didn't love it. Mm. I think I always knew I wanted to work for myself. Right. Um, I didn't think I'd be doing it this soon, but I knew I wanted to work for myself. And then when like a few jobs came up, like came up, I was just like, okay, do you know what? Let's just try it. And I can yeah. always move away again after if it doesn't work out. Yeah. Um, but yeah, that's. And so then you came back to Ireland and you were working with someone, but what made you go, okay, was it a particular time that you said, I'm going to start 
this brand now. I want to start this. I think I'm ready for it. I think it just happened organically. Like I, I've always, I've also like throughout um, while I was in college, I've always been creating clothes. I never sold my clothes. Mm -hmm. And I think when I came home, people were still, I've all, I was always like making clothes myself and I still didn't sell them until mm. this year. Right. Um, so people would always ask me and I was like, okay, do you know what? I'm just going to sell some clothes. I'll make some money. Yeah. Then I'll, do you know, I'll go away again after I finish this job and I'll go back and work again. Um, but then when I started selling them, then I suppose I, I was shocked with the amount of people that got onto me and wanting them. So I was like, oh my God, this is crazy. Do you know, so... I think so it, it just sort of, kind of all happened. happened. Yeah. yeah, I wasn't just like, okay, I'm, I'm coming home. Start I'm starting business. a brand. Yeah, yeah. That 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 like yeah that I didn't mean to. Of course, I knew I was going to do it down the line because yeah. my dad and my sister they're they're entrepreneurs that so they have yeah. their own businesses. But um, yeah, I I it just it was all organic. So you were kind of using yourself as well as like your best advertising and yeah. and business yeah. model essentially because yeah. you were posting the pictures of the clothes that you were making on social media yeah, and, and then, then it, the interaction yeah it kind of just That's caught on I, from yeah. there yeah I mean there's been a huge reaction uh in the last kind of I mean year is it it's a bit more than a year I now. started it in February yeah yeah so like yeah. literally in the last year and you know we were at the Galway races there uh last week and your name was coming up like a lot <laughs> which is an amazing thing to see I'm sure for yeah, yourself too um do you remember a time when like the, the big name came to you and was like, do you have something for me? And do you remember that as being? Because I know you've dressed like Suzanne Jackson. I mean, yeah. Louise Cooney wears your stuff. Yeah. Celia Holman Lee, obviously another yeah. Limerick woman, like wears your clothes too. Um, so what was like the first kind of big name that came knocking that went, made you go, oh crap? Yeah, it was definitely Suzanne. Was Suzanne, it? yeah. Mm. So I, I've known her for years before I even started. Mm. When I was in college, like I was working with Suzanne because my sister is her main makeup artist, oh, nice. um, Fiona. But um, yeah, I suppose I dressed her for her Dripping Gold launch. Oh, right, um, okay. So I created her yeah. um, a piece. So that was the first time that like, I suppose that was last year, was it? She yeah. Launched it? yeah, yeah, it wasn't last too long year. Ago, yeah. So I, I created her a piece for that, and I think that was the first time I was like, oh my gosh, this is just crazy. Like, oh my god. Yeah. Um, and I was still in college at that stage. I was doing my final, um, final project. I remember telling people like I was doing this, and they're like, Eva, what do you mean you're doing? Like, you have to do this, and I was like, yeah. no, like this is so worth it. Like, and so I. I prioritized it, but um, it was so worth it. Yeah, so she was definitely my first big name. And did she come to you and kind of like, how did the interaction go in terms of when someone is ordering a piece? Do they come to you and kind of say, you know, I want it to look like this, 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 and then you weigh in on it? Or do you have a very clear idea in your mind of how you want someone to look in a piece that you make? I think we'll share our visions. So yeah. like they'll give me theirs and then I'll do up some sketches with their ideas yeah. and I'll bring what I think it should be as well. Do you know, so we'll yeah. meet in the middle um, when it comes to things like that. So, yeah, I, I sort of, it's it's a process, you know, yeah. like that sort of side of it. But then also when you're making the garment, you do changes as well. And when you try it on, you might make more changes. Yeah. So it's a bit of a journey um, when it comes to like the development of a garment and like the look you're going for. Um, but I that's what I love. Do you know, it's really fun that seeing the end product, you're yeah. just like, oh my God. We're, yeah. I think like with... The things that you've made and stuff like that, first off, they're so eye-catching as well. And like you use kind of shapes, like today you're wearing something which is sample, so it's still in production, right? Oh, and try it on afterwards. <laughs> um, and the shoulders are, are incredible on it. And like that's kind of a theme that I've seen in some of the, yeah. the brighter pieces. But like um, it's the fabrics that you use as well. So like you use a lot of wool, like you use a lot of tweed and yeah. th these kind of things um, and you know you we touched on it there a while ago about the sustainability aspect of it how how important is sustainability to you when it comes to fashion in general first and then we'll kind of get into mm -hmm. your, your brand I think starting in the industry I knew like sustainability was always going to be a big part of my brand mm -hmm. it's something that's just like really close to me and it's so important as a young Irish designer um, for me to sort of speak with my clothing as well and not just I know having beautiful garments is most important but I think sustainability is so important going forward and with the amount of amazing wools we have here in Ireland yeah. I feel like that industry like people don't even see um, so I think incorporating like Ireland and sustainability and like ethics with 
make it like all my stuff is made in Ireland yeah um which I hope to keep um so I think it that it is really important to me to have the circle of like a full Irish production yeah. and the fabric as well there's definitely like it's definitely a movement that's happening at the moment like a lot of young mm -hmm. women are talking about it and are kind of yeah, trying to great. incorporate it a little bit more but yeah. you know for me like I'd be 10 years older than you and you know 10 years ago it just wasn't spoken no, about like it no. really wasn't fashion in general um you know has come on in in leaps and bounds like a, a classic thing to say but like it really has but I'm trying to figure out you know why this is happening now and like why it didn't happen for me and my friends in my early 20s you know like fast fashion was just what we knew and yeah. what we were brought up on and what everybody kind of knew i think do you know i think it was the blogger movement and i think it was do you know like the all the fast fashion companies out there and yeah. the bloggers getting sent the stuff and then the amount of impact they'd have on people buying and then the throwaway fashion you'd wear it once for your Instagram. I think yeah. that I think that is a huge part to play in it. Social media and wearing the top once and throwing it away and not caring about throwing it away at the same time. Yeah. Um I think that is a huge part to play in it. Absolutely. Um so I think people are starting to realise like landfills and yeah. I think everyone's getting a bit more educated on the topic, which is brilliant yeah absolutely um, I mean I think it's going to take like you know like you said Irish designers like you um Keela Moncrief we've had on the show before yeah. as well she's she's very much about you know sustainability and fashion and just in general when it comes to climate change as well she's yeah. become really outspoken on it as well which is incredible um like how bad is it like really because we've talked about sustainable fashion on the on the show before and we've talked about sustainability in general but I suppose like every time we touch on it I think it's important to to kind of relate it back to you know how much it is important for each individual to kind of try and incorporate those things into their closets so would you say that your closet is like fully sustainable and vintage like is that kind of the fashion life that you're leading at the moment? I'm not gonna lie. No, it's not. It's, yeah. it's hard. Like, it's, but I think it's easier to like be, be yeah. honest about that. And, yeah, like, say hundred percent. Of course. Like, yeah. ultimately, you can only do so much. Mm. But it, I think for me, it's about being conscious. Yes. So, like, if you're buying something, like, say, if you shop in Topshop, um, as long as like, I think if you're wearing like my jeans are from Topshop today, mm -hmm. and I have no problem with that, because if you if you have they have a long life. Yeah. That's another thing for me. Like. I, if something is going to last long, I just don't like buying clothes that are just going to be thrown away. Yeah. Um, I think it's all about like shopping, like not, you know, like not shopping all the time as well. Shopping like with key items for your wardrobe. Mm. Um, like, you know, not like crazy colors as well. Um, if you want crazy colors, maybe go vintage shopping. Yeah. More so if you're going to shop like in Topshop with jeans, like buy your basic jeans that you'll have, you yeah. know, for years and they do last for years. Yeah. Um, so I think it's all about like being conscious and just like not, I think people just over shop. We all do. Yeah, it's like th that's the thing as well. I remember like back in the day, the sh like when you go shopping with your mates and stuff, it was a full day activity. And yeah. like genuinely, I don't know the science behind it, but when you exchange those goods for money, yeah. like it does give you a bit of a rush. Like, and yeah. you just feel a little bit happier for a yeah. second. Yeah. Sometimes I go home and I wouldn't necessarily. Now, I've really tried to pull back on the amount of shopping that I do, but I definitely was notorious for being one of those girls that had about 15 black string tops. I think everyone was, though. Yeah. And I think everyone has sort of switched, though. I think in the past, yeah. like, I, I rarely shop. Yeah. Um, obviously, I make my That's own clothes. Because you can make your own clothes. <laughs> Jesus Christ, <laughs> if I was at home, just Ethan McNamara, I don't, da, 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 da. I'd, I'd, I'd be wearing all of my clothes too. Fair point, <laughs> okay. fair point. That's, um, okay, yeah. <laughs> but I think people have switched, like yeah. I think people are a bit more conscious and um, about what they shop and yeah. they shop with quality more so than um, going online and, you know, shopping in the wrong places. Yeah, absolutely. I suppose like, when it comes to being a designer in Ireland at the moment, you'll probably have a better insight into this than like obviously people who are outside the industry. But you know the big, and we won't, we won't name any names, but like the big fast fashion companies that are raking in millions, like billions essentially. It is a, a billion euro um, industry. Um, do you feel like they're really damaging the fashion industry? And do you think that, 
you know, I can see some of them are bringing in lines now, which are their conscious lines, and and which is great to see. Um, but you still don't necessarily know exactly what the materials are and stuff like that. Yeah. Um, is there a mood w amongst kind of Irish designers about what these massive companies are doing? And also, the influencers do one hundred percent play into it. You know. I know, and that's the thing. Yeah, I think it's like ultimately, it's down to the person and like their decision yeah and I think that's the only thing that's going to switch I know we can blame the companies mm. and the companies are at blame as well but they're the companies doing what the consumer is consuming yeah so they're only keep, supplying the yeah demand. so I know it, it is down to them but it's also down to us to change it um and yeah it is hard to watch like especially like when like you see an amazing top yeah. um, from a high designer and then you see it for like to your like you know on this website yeah that people are they're also knocking off you know designs which is horrible to see and especially like up and coming designers you know it's really hard um but yeah i think it's just back to the consumer and you know like really asking yourself the question before you shop yeah um where you shop and is it transparent like with my line um I want to have a full circle, so I want to start with the transparency of where I get my fabric to where it's made to um, going into the shopper's hand. So it's going to be like a full circle of the knowledge of my whole garment, yeah. um, which is important. I, I think that's hopefully going forward in the industry um, that will be known, like you'll know where it's from, you'll know exactly what it's made of. Yeah. Um, and I think it's all about gaining knowledge and um, really developing your own knowledge mm. about the industry, yeah. um, which is something I really want to talk about more as a fashion designer mm. and on that topic. I think it's really important to educate people because also people don't know. Do you know, it's hard to know That's these it. things. Yeah. It's, it is about like, it's a little bit, because I've spoken to a few designers and we've had people from the fashion industry in before on the show and I do feel like I'm learning a lot more every time mm -hmm. I speak to, to yeah, people about yeah. it because I genuinely didn't know anything about it. Yeah, do you know what I mean? Yeah, like I would never things, be yeah. able and I think something like you touching on transparency, that's a responsibility on designers because yeah, like 100%. we're gonna buy those pretty things, you know? Like yeah. we, we really are. That's what happens. But I think if people who are making the clothes are more transparent about like you said, yeah, the fabrics 100%. and where it's coming from, yeah. like that's only gonna educate people more. Yeah. So yeah. I think that's a really good thing to kind of focus on anyway. Yeah, yeah. Yeah, you talked about your line there and kind of, you know, the full circle element of it. So predominantly you're online at the moment. Yes. Is that where you kind of feel like you want to stay or do you want to move out into, you know, having your own shops or pop-ups or what's yeah. the what's the kind of future for IFA? That's what I don't know if I said that like but it's called IFA, right? Yeah, that's, yeah. IFA, IFA Ireland. Where did um, you come up with that name? <laughs> Classic. <laughs> I know. Yeah. Um, yeah, so I think going forward, um, I'd love to do some pop-ups. I think they'd yeah. really suit my brand. I don't want to open a shop anytime soon. Really? I think, yeah, no, it's not. This clip, what did I tell you about this clip? If I oh, told you it was coming. Yeah, it's gone, it's gone, <laughs> go on. Um, yeah, I think pop-ups is um, in my direction. Um, online is where, like I'm developing my website um, at the moment mm. and Instagram that's just where it's all happening for me I mean mm. I'm not going to rule out a shop of course down the line I'd love it but I think right now like sales wise it's going really well online yeah um, I saw like on your website and stuff you know blogging is really important to you as well so yeah. it's kind of like you know because a lot of the designs and because everybody has has kind of sat up and taken notice of you online and um, you have kind of inadvertently become an influencer as well yourself in a way yeah. does that like concern you or are you like okay cool if I can reach more people then I'm no, happy to I, go that I way. started as I didn't start as an influencer but I yeah. started as a like blogger. I was blogging yeah. yeah online um and that's how I sort of that's how it sort of happened because I had a following and then people saw my clothes and you know like yeah. it sort of happened like that but yeah I want to have a voice I want to be able to share um, my thoughts on sustainable fashion and I want to be able to educate people yeah um so I think that's like a really important thing for me to have still have a blog with my website so yeah. it'll be like on you know sustainable fashion and sort of educating people at the same time mm. as having a clothing line um, I think that's really like important for my brand it's incredible that you're here in Ireland and that you're 
staying here for now. But like you said, you know, when people kind of graduate in the fashion business, it is good to go abroad and to kind of, you know, see what's out there and, and see like, you know, the fashion capitals, which would be Paris, London, New York. Mm -hmm. um, you know, do you see yourself staying in Ireland or do you see yourself kind of following those those places? Because like, I mean, you've already worked in some of the most incredible places for fashion, but like, you know, whenever I talk to people who are starting businesses and stuff, especially young people, it's incredible to see them do it here in Ireland. Mm -hmm. But where do you see yourself in kind of the next few years? I think I'll be in Ireland. Yeah, I love Ireland. I really do. Um, but there's there's so much room here, I think. Yeah, Everybody I really who's worked yeah. in fashion has always said, you know, for a long time, we didn't necessarily have uh, a style aesthetic, you know, we were mm -hmm. just like putting all those feckin' things on our denim jackets and yeah. stuff. It was pretty horrific. Um, but now, like with the influx of people like you, we seem to be developing a little bit more yeah. in terms of fashion. Yeah, you know? like we have an amazing industry here and especially Limerick, like it's so up and coming. Yeah. Um, I, yeah, no, I really love Ireland and I, I think we have so much to offer here that not everyone knows about it internationally. Like I had, you know, like it's just, I think we have so much to offer and I'm really excited about like working, especially with Irish Mills, some mm. projects I've coming up. Um, it's just really exciting here. So I don't yeah. think I'll be moving anytime soon. And it's not like it was, you know, 10 years ago when you, when yeah. you had to leave. Yeah, yeah, you know? exactly. Like the industry does seem think, to be doing well. Yeah, I think people still do feel like they have to leave and I get that. Mm. I, I felt like that as well. And yeah. I think you should just go and do you know, like see everywhere else. I think it's really important to go as well. Yeah. And and it's not to say down the line, I might want to go somewhere else as well. Yeah. Um, but right now, I love Ireland. And um, I think I have experienced like New York and I've experienced Paris and I was in London for a bit. Mm. So um, I've sort of seen the industry and a bit of it. Obviously, I'm only starting up so much to learn. Um, yeah. But yeah, no, I, I think I'm really happy here right yeah. now. Well, I have to say, like we mentioned the Galway races there before, we were there um, covering the best dress competition oh, yeah. um, for her. And it was intense. It was the first kind of best dress competition that I had worked. And so like people are into it, you know what I mean? Like yeah. it's, it's very competitive. And some of the fashion, especially like with Irish designers and milliners and stuff, like it, it's, it's stunning work and mm -hmm. there's stunning artists that are here in Ireland like yeah there's such an amazing um display of Irish design especially you see them at the races yeah. like such talent in Ireland and I feel like there's loads of up and coming as well yeah. um, which is brilliant to see and milliners yeah. as well um so many which is so great to see absolutely and it's really exciting and I feel like you really do see it at the ladies days I feel like they just go yeah all out and even today I'm excited to see the fashion at the RDS I know you're heading uh, off which, there yeah. soon so I have to like let you go but I want to ask yeah. before I do um so what's coming up next for you in terms of your brand so what are we going to be seeing from you in the next now I ha sometimes I get confused by fashion so we That's are confusing. in the summer at the moment yes but what are you working on right now? It's very fast. It's very fast. So you're working autumn, winter? Yes. Or are you already well, done? Well, autumn, winter is sort of nearly finished in a way. But, Christ um, alive. Like, I'm yeah, literally like it's holding scary, on to the summer. It? Yeah. Um, but yeah, I also, I don't like, I don't rush myself either. Like, mm. I'm still processing a lot of the autumn, winter um, collections are finished now. Yeah. And they're, you know, like on the way, they're all being produced. Um, but so they'll be in the shops? In production. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. Um, so designers right now might be working on spring, spring summer, summer again. Next, yeah, yeah. Um, I know it's weird, isn't it? So fast. It's mad. But yeah, I'm I'm taking my time with this, and I'm sort of not rushing myself. And um, you'll see a lot of Irish wool okay. um, coming up for my autumn winter collection, um, which is so exciting because that's what I sort of had envisioned Efa to be as a brand. Yeah. Um, working with Irish wool. Mo mills yeah can't speak um and having the whole sustainable biodegradable but it, it's incredible aspect. that you're using wool as well because like for a long time wool is i think quite associated with ireland yeah. but almost in an old-fashioned kind I know, of way and that's the thing i yeah. feel like we have such beautiful materials yeah um and i've very it's like what your granny and granddad would wear yeah, do you know what i mean I know, as in that's what it is it, and no has been portrayed as, yeah. on a global stage. Yeah. But so you're, I'm presuming that it's definitely not going to be like that with your stuff, but you're going to change it all. Yeah, no, it's mm. fresh, new. I actually um, created my own weave. So okay. it's my own um, 
print on the fabric. Oh, wow. So I have worked with an Irish wool mill on it and I'm going to have my own print on the fabric. Um, so when you say weave, like literally like... So, oh yeah, so no, say if this is the jacket and say, do you know, like if it has a check or something, yeah. I put my own check colours into it and I picked my own base colours. Oh, wow. Um, so yeah, it's exciting. That's so exciting. Yeah, so I, that's where I want to leave to head this year and yeah. um, I was very fortunate that I got the opportunity to do it. So that's what you'll see from me. So we're going to be seeing that soon. Um, yeah, I, ooh, not too soon. Not too soon. Yeah, I'm still. It sounds like it's a long it's, process Oh, it's such, because well. you actually, yeah, it's very long, especially when you're starting from, like, doing it yourself, you know, like, yeah. picking the own fab, your own weave, which is what I wanted to do because I want it to be. Yeah. Aoife. Yeah. Um, so, yeah, it's a long process, but I, hopefully it'll be worth it. That's incredible. And you said really quickly there, you said, um, earlier that you're, you weren't necessarily someone who would follow a trend. So coming into, say, like autumn, winter or something, do you keep your eye on trends now and, and what's kind yeah, of coming of course, off yeah. the catwalks? And then can you tell me, just so that I know, what are the big trends that we're going to be seeing? Ooh, for autumn, winter? Yeah, just tell us so that I know. Oh. I did see in Vogue there that they're going to have, and I hope this doesn't catch on, um, mismatched shoes, apparently. Something that they're showing on the catwalks. I've seen it. Come on now. I don't know. I don't know Come how many people now. are going to do it in Ireland. No. Fashion, <laughs> I feel like fashion, our Irish drunk. trends are a bit different. That's to too this. much. <laughs> yeah, I know it's a bit crazy. No. I feel like there's a lot of color blocking going on. Okay. Um, which I am loving lately. Yeah. Um, a lot of color blocking. Um, a lot of uh, different floral prints, which yeah. like sort of mixing. I think mixing and matching in clothing is like it's not as much like two pieces of the same like velvet two-piece. I think yeah. there's like a lot of like floral and then you'll have your velvet top. I think there's a lot of mix and matching in that way and sort of okay. like bright colours. Which is nice um, to see because remember that used yeah. to always be the thing that you would never do. Like you could never put orange and pink together, orange yeah, and red together. Yeah, but I think, think colours are really coming through this yeah. year. Um, they have, that's the main one that's caught my eye. I think that's what I love doing personally anyway yeah. um, with colour. Um, so yeah, that's what I'm really seeing for autumn winter. And where are we going to see some of your designs next? Are there any people who are going to be wearing them soon that we should keep our eye on? I have a few today, but I'm afraid to say it in you case they don't wear it. <laughs> so this is the thing, you don't know up until the moment. That's it, yeah. Because, like, of course, yeah. like influencers, there's so much thing, so many um, outfits to choose and from. Options, and options, yeah. Yeah, so there'll be a few big names today, but I'm not going to say anything just yet. Okay, so keep an eye on my Instagram, and hopefully they'll be up there by the time this is That's absolutely goes. fair. Yeah, well, <laughs> do keep an eye on Aoife's Instagram, Aoife McNamara, and the website is uh, Aoife McNamara Designs as well. You can find her basically yeah, everywhere. Ireland, yeah. Aoife Ireland yep. um, that's all the time that we have but thank you so much for coming in I'm going to let you get me. to the horse show um, I was meant to go but I'm not <laughs> I'm just a little bit too busy but um, maybe if I get one of your designs I'll go to the next one yes of course Aoife thank you so much for coming in really thank appreciate it thank you for having it. me